Friends, fellow Singaporeans, today is May Day. Today we recognize the struggles of workers over the years. For many years, Singapore had a very dynamic trade union movement. But the last local strike in Singapore was called by Mr. Ong Teng Cheong. And unfortunately, we don't have trade union leaders like that anymore. One of my heroes is Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt. And she was one of the authors of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which Singapore signed onto more than 50 years ago when we joined the United Nations. And she is quoted as saying, great people talk about ideas, average people talk about events, and small people talk about other people. <laughs> after, after one round of rallies, what is the PAP talking about? <laughs> On nomination day, DPM Taman met me, and we both agreed we would keep the campaign clean and fair and focus on the issues. What happened? Talk about people. There's been very little constructive debate on the issues. Instead, the PAP has been launching venomous attacks on Dr. Chi based on some distorted picture of events from 15 or 20 years ago. We believe that you can criticize what a person says or what a person does because these may reflect their values, but don't attack the person. We believe it is fair to ask what happened to the plan, such as the Hawker Center that Mr. David Ong promised the people of Bukit Batok. But it's not right to attack him personally. Similarly, it's okay to criticize Dr. Chi for asking PM Go about Singapore's promise to President Suharto of $5 billion 15 years ago. But attacking his character on that basis is uncalled for. The Prime Minister in his statement last night said, Anyone standing for public office should be prepared to have his past actions examined transparently and honestly. We totally agree and we welcome the opportunity to examine all the assets of the PAP ministers and MPs. Of course, uh, you know, with the current leak of the Panama Papers and other related documents, the Prime Minister may get his wish sooner than he expected. A person is not solely defined by his or her actions and words, although they often do reflect his or her values. We are not one-dimensional people, as Minister of Finance Mr. Heng Sui Kiet seems to think that we are. Mr. Chi, Dr. Chi and Mr. Murali are both someone's husband, someone's son, someone's father. And they are decent people, as far as we can tell, men of good character. Despite the PAP's attempts to smear Dr. Chi, anybody who has met him here in Bukit Batok, in Holland Bukit Timah, or any other area that he has been visiting and spent time with him will know that he is someone with a good character. Dr. Chi has been in the spotlight of the mainstream media for the last couple of years, with them following him around, trying to trick him or trap him on camera to saying something wrong. But people can see his character from what he has said and done in recent years, without the biases of the past era when there was no social media, no Facebook. But this election is not about Dr. Chi or Mr. Murali's personality. It's about the issues that they have proposed. It's not about character assassination. Since 2012, the SDP has put up our propos policy proposals for public debate. We started with an evidence-based healthcare proposal and have moved on to offer concrete and well-thought-out proposals in other areas, including housing, town council management. We would like them to be debated fully. We had hoped that this would be so in the campaign and are disappointed that it hasn't happened. What we would like to see Although, to be fair, again, to the Prime Minister, the Wan Pao, and also to Miss Grace Fu, the Wan Pao made an error in their headline, and they have since amended it, although they don't want to apologize. The Straits Times, too, made the ridiculous statement that character is not important. To restate our point, we feel you can criticize the speech, the action, the policy, and the values they represent, but do not attack the man. To give another example, at a forum organized by the Institute of Policy Studies uh, in this past year, 
I publicly disagreed with the Prime Minister on his comment that Israelis are smarter than Singaporeans. I pointed out that I think Singaporeans are smarter than Israelis because we know how to live in peace with our neighbours. But I did not call the Prime Minister unpatriotic for putting down Singaporeans. Furthermore, neither me nor anyone in the SDP would use the same kind of language to criticise the Prime Minister that the former director of the National Neuroscience Institute did. That saddened the Prime Minister and shocked many of us too. We could have used Dr. Lee's published allegations to expose the hypocrisy of the Prime Minister's statements on character, but we will not. That is not who we are. That is not how we promised to run this campaign. And it will not help the people of Bukit Batok. So sorry, we're not going to do that. The Prime Minister also made some puzzling allegations about racism based on some comments made by anonymous posters on SDP's Facebook page. He didn't provide the evidence to back this up, so perhaps it was another mistake, this time by a Cao Pao reporter, who may have mistaken some of the comments of provocateurs for official SDP postings. I hope that this reporter will do his homework and find out who those people were making those comments. Because as Dr. Chi pointed out, the SDP has never tolerated racism of any kind. In fact, during the last general election, during my party political broadcast, I said at the start, the SDP is a competent, constructive, compassionate party which believes in social justice with a clear vision for Singapore. We want to build a democratic society based on justice and equality. Yeah. Equality to us means that all the top schools are open to all children regardless of language, stream or ethnicity. It also means to us that all children get a good education regardless of how much their parents can afford in terms of tuition. Equality also means that a national minimum wage for all workers, regardless of whether they're local or, or foreign, so they can't be exploited. Equality also means equal treatment of all religions in the workplace and in the military. Now, Dr. Chi has been prosecuted for speaking up for Muslim school children. He's been outspoken in the defense of human rights for all Singaporeans. In fact, when Mrs. Ms. Grace Fu made her allegations about campaigning on racial grounds without any evidence, some of us were wondering whether she was referring to the PAP campaign of six months ago, when we fielded the excellent Mr. Sadasivam, who had more than 10 years of grassroots experience, and he unexpectedly lost. If this indeed uh, was, we sincerely hope that this was not due to uh, any kind of racial politics by the, by the team from the PAP. If indeed it was the case, this is disgraceful, and we hope that Ms. Grace Fu clarifies her position quickly. She also made some puzzling comments about Dr. Chi's career as an author and, and politician. I am especially puzzled because she's the Minister for Culture. I mean, she doesn't seem to believe anyone can make a living from doing academic research in institutions of higher learning and publishing books for which people queue up for hours. Perhaps that's the reason why the National Arts Council, which is under her ministry, withdrew its support from the only Singaporean book ever to have made it to the bestseller list in the New York Times and in Amazon, Sunny Liu's The Art of Charlie Chan Hock Chai. Perhaps, to her, being an author or politician is not a real job. In that case, I'm really worried about the future of Singapore under her ministry. The last PAP rally was also troubling in that the PAP seems to have run out of new ideas for Bukit Batok. Six months ago, they talked about a $24 million plan, including a new hawker centre, childcare centres, etc. Now we hear nothing about that. Food is an important issue to all Singaporeans. And it would be good to hear an update about what's happened to the new Hawker Centre proposed in August 2015. Mr. Murali began the campaign proposing a $1.9 million programme. But now he admits that was actually part of the $24 million programme proposed last year. <laughs> Apart from the healthcare cooperative, which I would be happy to debate, we haven't heard anything new. I have no doubt that Mr. Murali is a good man. A friend of mine, Mr. Remy Chu, who worked with him on a case involving illegal importation of endangered rosewood, told me he's a very good man. The PAP activists of Paya Labour, 
uh, uh, told me how told us how he served with distinction as PAP branch chair for Pai Labour for the last five years. Like most other PAP candidates, he's been successful in, career, in his career. He's now the head of commercial litigation at a major law firm. If elected, he could be just like all the other 50, 82 PAP MPs, largely silent. You know, in my 51 years, I have never been visited by a PAP MP. Not that I think I miss a lot. On the other hand, if Dr. Chi is elected to parliament, no one can deny that parliament will be changed beyond recognition. For one thing, the PAP MPs will have to work a lot harder. If you watch the recent Committee of Supply debate on the budget on television, it was striking how many empty chairs there were on the PAP benches. Perhaps they were all busy at their part-time jobs in the corporate or banking or business worlds. In contrast, when the Aljunian Alkang Town Council issue was being discussed, Parliament was full of PAP MPs looking for opportunities to score points by criticizing the Workers' Party. You can be sure, when Dr. Chi gets into Parliament, the PAP MPs will be on their toes. Just last Monday, there was a major breakdown in the MRT, which affected 20 MRT stations. According to reports in the mainstream and social media, there was only one MRT station that had PAP activists carrying torchlights, showing elderly people how to go down the stairs. You know which MRT station that was? Bukit Batok MRT station. And why? Because that's where Dr. Chi was campaigning. Coincidence? I don't think so. As the residents of Paya Lebar know, you can get two for the price of one. They can seek out Mr. Chen Xiaomao if they have any problems. And if that doesn't work, they can seek out the, PAP, the Paya Labor PAP branch chairman, Mr. Morelli. I'm sure Mr. Morelli will do the same for the residents of Bukit Batok, having served here for 16 years. He will continue to serve as a PAP activist and leader, even if Dr. Chi is elected to parliament. Yeah. Yeah. All that aside, putting Dr. Chi in parliament gives each and every one of you, residents of Bukit Batok, an opportunity to have an independent voice in Parliament, to have one more voice to ask the government why they are so intent on flooding our already crowded island with 6.9 million people, to ask why our education system needs to put so much stress on students, teachers and parents and still cannot produce good enough talent so we need to import foreign talent to fulfil critical roles in our economy. If and when Dr. Chi gets into Parliament, he can ask the hard questions about CPF, whether we're ever going to see our hard-earned CPF money back. You've seen our town council policy. You've heard about our social programs. You've met some of our town council transition team. Now is the time to vote for a strong independent voice in Parliament. Now is the time to vote for Dr. Chi. Thank you.